Hey guys, welcome to uh, Overland Garage and today we are, uh, you know, working on the Mustang, finally. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly what we're doing today. So thanks for tuning in. This is Overland Garage. I know it's been a little long overdue and um, I haven't been working on this much because, you know, life happens and I've had a lot of other things happen, but um, we've got some good news. I got the floor all fixed in this and um, was able to get the nose of the car primed and fix the radiator support and I'm going to show you what we did um, in the behind the scenes of Overland Garage. And then today our goal is to mask up the windshield, get these quarter windows out and um, we may get into some painting the final coat on the front and the floor. So if everything goes as planned, we're going to do some masking and maybe some painting. So I'll show you what we've done right now. So first things first, you're probably going to notice that I built a new radiator support. And I'm not completely finished with this. I want to clean this up a little more, but like this was the old one and that's no bueno. And so, you know, this is probably a little overkill. And um, I need to do some grinding still because I had some spatter issues with the welding. But it came out pretty good. And then I decided to go ahead and get the old Rust-Oleum primer going. And I got a little carried away with that. But also, you're going to notice, okay, remember, delete kit. So I'm going to get a QA1. Um, that's my research. shows me that that's the best way to run the LS motors, the QA1 K member with the LS motor mounts. And I'm gonna to try to reuse the A arms and then change the ball joint. So if you have any thoughts on that, let me know. But the major thing that I had to do was all this rust repair. And then I fixed this panel here, there was a hole here. And then I fixed the whole floor. So don't mind the camera mount. The whole floor in here is finally Looks like a floor again. It's a little dirty, but at least you can see that there's no rust and I have something to work with again. Our main focus today though is to get these out. I've already taken the window trim off and I deleted the rear hatch and uh, that's got to get some body work done to it. Uh, it's not rusty, but it's had some dents in it, which are going to be tricky to pull. And I got some dents to pull in this car, but I want to pull these glass out. I'm going to mask the doorway, the door opening, and then probably mask this trunk area um, because I'm not really going to paint the inside of this car because it looks really good. I probably will paint the floor, but um, I'm going to tape all that off and just do the floor separate from everything else. But I got to get the glass out because personally, I want to tint the windows. And then I know that these cars have a problem with the rear glass leaking so I'm gonna redo the butyl on the windows anyways so I might as well take them out and clean them up so yeah the first thing we're gonna do today is start doing some cleanup get those windows out and mask off the car first order of business is we're gonna mask this windshield off and um, probably gonna take the rear view off I don't know yet Maybe I'll just leave it in, but I wanted to paint inside the car, and I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to get paint on the inside of the glass. So I'll probably end up taking that off, but we'll worry about that when we get there. The biggest thing is mask this off, get those glass windows out so that we can start prepping this car for paint because i got to do a lot of sanding and yeah, body work, that's the way it is. But we're going to just get started on that right now. And what I'm using for masking paper is, uh, I went with the good stuff. This is 3M, and they do not give this away. And 
Oddly enough, it comes in these weird 18 inch rolls, but I think that's gonna be almost a windshield, so I think I can do this in like two sheets. So we're gonna get a good utility knife and you know, the good old green mask and tape. So here we go. everything to be all nice because you know the better the masking job the better the paint job and anything you don't want paint on you better mask it and you got to make sure that especially with masking paper and if there's any layers showing and you're spraying along if paint if wind and paint can get around it and rip it off it will and paint will get in there so you got to make sure that all your gaps are tight so that's why I took a little extra time and cut stuff and made it look half decent. Now the windshield's all masked up. I'm gonna move to the quarter glass and try to get that out, hopefully without breaking it. So, the absolute first thing I'm gonna do is these are supposed to have quarter inch screws in them. But somebody put, I mean, not screws, quarter inch um, little. Yeah, screws, bolts, nuts, whatever. But somebody put regular screws in these. So these have been out before, which is kind of concerning. And um, so to sit on here. First thing I'm gonna do is label every single one of these because when we take these off, these are all a different shape and size. So I'm gonna label this. This is number one, number one, number two, two, three. And you're never going to see this because there's plastic that covers it. There's seven of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, we're very carefully going to stick this pry tool in here to release the butyl and very carefully separate the glass from the butyl. Now, if this doesn't work immediately, we're going to get some heat and just around the edge of the glass, heat that butyl up just enough so it moves. But we'll try it without it first and see what happens. 
Put your hand on the back side of the glass too so you don't slip and break it. Yeah, I'm already not liking that, so we're going to get some heat. And also, everything you do around glass, you want to be really careful with. So. That's out, and there it is right there. You need to be very patient with these because if you have an 85, 86, or anything older, they don't make this glass anymore. And it's tempered, and it's very easy to break, so I'm gonna be pretty delicate with these, and then we gotta clean all that butyl up, but what I'm gonna do when I get those out is I'm gonna mask the out inside so that I can spray the outside of the car. But uh, I need to do a bunch of body work and I didn't want these in the way because I want to do some work and tint them. But I'm gonna get this other side out and um, then we'll move on to the next step. So real quick, I want to show you something. I don't see it, know if you can see it, but there's a string inside this original butyl. And if you can get it to come out, in theory, you're supposed to be able to pull this very gently. Now I've heated this butyl up some with a heat gun. I see, yeah, see it just breaks off. But in theory, if you can get that string, that's supposed to separate it. It's supposed to be really easy to get this out too, but I haven't been able to get a hold of that string for more than a couple of seconds without breaking it. So we're gonna keep going the old fashioned way. Well, that was a pain. I ended up taking all that old butyl out of there and that didn't exactly come out that good, but the other side was easier because I think it's original. Whatever. So now I'm just going to mask the inside of this because I'm only going to be sanding this and cleaning this up and painting it. And the inside of the car I'm actually not going to paint because it's all original and it looks really good and it's never going to see it personally. So I'm just going to mask both sides inside and then we can start. That's code for sanding. day later and it's uh, 1240 in the morning on Wednesday well it's Tuesday morning anyways um, we were masking and such and window removal but now what we're gonna try to do is uh, I'm gonna blow all the dirt down and try to clean this up and then we're gonna just spray from like this line in the floor just what I have primed and then we're gonna try to spray the nose black. So uh, I'm gonna show you a little trick. I hope that it works. I've heard this works. And that is, 
Instead of masking the inside of the glass, I'm gonna put some wax on it. So just regular car wax. And that way, um, the paint won't stick. And that's generally what the, the idea is. is Cause I'm not gonna get be spraying the glass, but I'm gonna be spraying in here. There's gonna be some overspray. So we wanna get that wiped down with some good old wax. You could, should probably remove move this so I don't, you know, like knock it off the floor and smash it because they only make like one of these. And then we're just gonna do it instead of talking about it. So let's get into this and start doing it. And uh, you're welcome on the old body cam. So you get to see what I see now. you know what I'm working with here so we're gonna be spraying Rust-Oleum semi-gloss black and we're gonna thin it with acetone because that's what Rust-Oleum recommends you could probably thin it with reducer or uh, there's a couple of others that you can use um, but Rust-Oleum recommends acetone and it's 15 percent per I think it's a gallon so it's very very little um, I kind of went overboard with the acetone on the last time and I painted the brown anyways and we are using the Harbor Freight, and this is their premium professional series automotive gun. Now, one thing you will want to do, every single gun that I spray, I recommend this. This is an inline air filter. Um, it filters water and air. Because the biggest thing you can do when you're painting, as far as a mistake, is let water get into your spray and ruin the paint job. One, you could be like 99% done, and you're going along and one drop will ruin a whole paint job. So you do your best to try to keep everything out. And then obviously an air pressure regulator. And this is just because I don't want to have 120 PSI going to the gun. Because two things, you're going to waste paint and you're going to make a mess. So these guns should be around 20 to 30 PSI, maybe 40 at the most. But um, yeah, I mean it says on the gun 30 to 40. So right around in that... 25 to 35 range and then so we're just going to put probably going to do half this cup and then we're going to just throw a little acetone in it mix it up and we'll see how it sprays always a good idea have a good set of gloves and then a respirator um, if you're indoors definitely a respirator if you're outside i'd say you don't need one but you should still wear one because this stuff is toxic to your health and you shouldn't be breathing it so without that let's get mixing it up get going Final step, I always grab this trainer because that's cheap insurance to get any extra dirt and pigments out of it. I mean dirt particles out of your paint job. Because you know, 
Everybody likes their dirt and their paint. We try to avoid the dirt in our paint if we can help it. I hope this isn't too thick. I can always throw a little bit more acetone in there if I have to. But we'll run it and see what happens. I'm gonna save a little bit of this just in case I need a little extra. All right, so we'll get that all set up. I'm gonna just do a little test spray, and I'll show you that. I'm gonna switch cameras here, and we'll do a little test spray and. Then we'll start painting this pig. Well, I got it as good as I can, so here we go. Definitely not an expert painter, but uh, I think it came out pretty good. It's going to be all black and shiny. Interior peakage here. too involved and it's pretty simple I mean you can do a good job with cheap paint I mean rust-oleum uh, that's probably ten twelve dollars for that quart I have a whole gallon of it that's like thirty eight dollars and paint is going way up so if you guys are uh, wanting to do some painting projects you better get out there and buy that paint now but uh, I hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing here um, Please give me some suggestions. If you guys have some other products that you prefer over Rust-Oleum, 
I mean, I've heard of Eastwood makes a really good paint. Uh, P.O.R. makes a good paint. The only thing with P.O.R. is I haven't found that you can really spray it through a gun that easy. And um, But give me some content suggestions. Let me know what you guys want to use for paint. And uh, getting excited because pretty soon we're going to be throwing the K-member in. I got a tubular K-member coming. And then we'll be working on some suspension stuff. Throwing the interior back in this car, doing a lot of body work, and then we'll be painting the whole car. But I'm going to have to do a lot of cleaning of this garage before we can do that. But I wanted to get all of this painted so that I could throw the engine and drivetrain in last and that I don't have to worry about anything under here. So that's why I took the extra measures to clean all this up, get this crap out of the way, and that the floor is done. Floor is done. And then... Uh, now we can just focus on the fun stuff. So, paint, bodywork, interior, and then LS power. So, thanks for tuning in today. Be uh, looking forward for our next video because in the next video, we're gonna start tackling the bodywork. And um, I'm gonna show you some dent removal. I'm gonna show you a Harbor Freight dent puller that I bought, and I'm excited to use it. I've heard good things about it, so, you're going to want to stick around, and we're going to do some paint and body work in our next video, and get this thing in some primer colors. So, thanks for tuning in today. Please give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Become a supporter of the channel. Tell your friends, relatives, and uh, pretty soon it's going to be getting warmer. We're going to be getting out there and build and explore. So, thanks for tuning in today. This has been Overland Garage.